you today. Uh, this is my first time here in the Egyptian Legal Center page. Okay, uh, today I will going to talk about a very important issue for nephrologists. Okay, all of us work in the nephrology uh, department of different hospitals. We see patients with cancer and they are uh, taking our advice what to do with these patients. How to deal with a cancer patient and acute injury. Okay. Uh, epidemiologically, there is a large population based studies that have supported the conclusion that acute kidney injury is more common uh, in patients with cancer. Depending upon the definition of acute kidney injury, the incidence rate varies. In one study that used the cutoff point for acute kidney injury uh, arising between by about 50%, this leads uh, this causes acute kidney injury with 17.5% in the first year after diagnosis of cancer. Cancers with high risk kidney injury are renal cell carcinoma, hematocellular carcinoma, lymphomas, leukemias, and what's called hematopoietic, uh, hematopoietic uh, cancers. And uh, of course, the multiple myeloma. This is the famous rifle criteria. This is our criteria to diagnose acute kidney injury in any patient. Okay, the outcomes of the study is that a patient, a patient has a cancer and goes to uh, have acute kidney injury. Uh, acute kidney injury is associated with substantial morbidities and mortalities. In one study, uh, with uh, hematological cancer in induction phase, during induction of chemotherapy, the mortality rises to 14% in risk category in the rifle criteria I showed you before, and to 62% failure in failure category, and this in correspondence to 4 only percent to have a kidney injury with a patient out of the rifle criteria. Another study in cancer patients in the ICU the mortality reaches 49% in high risk category and 62% in injury category and 87% in failure category. In addition, that only 4% in patients have no uh, kidney injury group. Okay, uh, this is why because uh, there is cancer specific risk factor for acute kidney injury. Usually, older age, congestive heart failure, uh, a, a chronic kidney disease in the patient from the start, hypovolemia that uh, caused by chemotherapy, nausea really, uh, and vomiting, or acute uh, graft versus host disease, distant metastasis, multiple myeloma, liver cancer, nephrectomy in renal cell carcinoma, and in induction chemotherapy for acute lymphoma or leukemia. Okay, this is the famous multiple myeloma slide. What is the mechanism of acute kidney injury in a multiple myeloma patient? Mostly, uh, up to 50% of the patients who are diagnosed multiple myeloma have 50% uh, trials in elevated cervical creatinine at the time of the diagnosis. This is very, very, very much common. And in the course of multiple myeloma, we see too many patients, even in, in the start, they don't have any chronic kidney disease or any acute kidney disease, they develop acute kidney injury during the course of their multiple myeloma treatment. Okay, uh, to diagnose multiple myeloma, we have to do the serum uh, free light chain assay and serum protein electrophoresis. If there is a normal kappa lambda ratio, the uh, free light chain uh, and free light chain are detected, we have to do the urine 24 hours. Uh, the injury, acute kidney injury, might be due to three causes. The first cause is due to the cost nephropathy or due to proximal tubular disease. The other uh, type of injury is due to other uh, factors that, than paraproteinemia, like the hypercalcemia, volume depletion, tumor lysis syndrome, urate nephropathy, acute nephrocalcinosis, and sepsis, or due to glomerular disease. Secondary glomerular disease can be caused due to amyloidosis, monoclonal IgG deposition, proliferative glomerulonephritis uh, with uh, monoclonal IgG deposition, monoclonal trigonobulinia, 
membrane of proliferative GNC3 glomerulopathy or fibrillary glomerular nephritis and immune tactonic glomerulopathy. Okay, regarding the cost nephropathy, this is due to obstruction of uh, the tubules by the light chains that go into the tubules bind to the, to the famous stem spores for protein, which is called nanodurumodulin. They bind together and form insoluble costs. They uh, obstruct the tubules that causes reactive oxygen species and uh, tubular injury and uh, uh, tubular injury and mitochondrial damage in the uh, tubular cells. Okay, the proximal tubular disease is, is the same mechanism but occurs in the proximal tubules and this might lead to Fanconi syndrome and proximal tubulopathy even if the patient doesn't have elevated in the serum periathrin. Okay, the treatment of high, uh, of cast nephropathy uh, uh, is first of all we have to do hydration, hydration, hydration by normal saline. Uh, correct the hypercalcemia if we can do a uh, plus stop in the chemotherapy which will lead to high recovery rate. There is a new proteasome inhibitor called the protein uh, zone. This is which is called the Vilcade of course in the market. Uh, the Vilcade makes the 70% uh, better in the renal outcomes in the patient with multiple myeloma using it. Uh, in association with thalidomide or linalidomide uh, and there is 75% that the patient might be off dialysis, the patient who started dialysis in multiple myeloma of course by this treatment can be uh, off dialysis. Okay, stem cell transplantation is a good uh, option for treatment of uh, uh, bone marrow transplantation is a good option for treatment of multiple myeloma, but the problem is that the uh, hematological manifestation is better, but the kidney uh, uh, manifestations are not very improved by the bone marrow transplantation. Uh, removal of the toxins uh, of the light chain, free light chains, by the plasma pharesis or a hemodialysis with high cutoff membrane to allow large molecules. In one study, need to decrease free light chain by 60% reduction of the free light chain, leading to 80% recovery of the acute kidney injury. Uh, but this trial is the controversial with another trial telling that the patient we under the treatment of with Vilcade uh, doesn't need this type of uh, treatment with plasma paralysis because uh, Vilcade might be affected by the plasma uh, paralysis. Uh, not to the patient. There is two studies going on till now, no, no cutoff results for them, one called the Mario study and one called the Emily study. Uh, they showed uh, similar results. There is no recommendation still now to use the uh, high cutoff hemodialysis uh, versus the uh, high filtration, uh, high flux hemodialysis. Uh, it doesn't show uh, very uh, 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 over uh, results by using the high cutoff hemodialysis uh, in these patients, but, uh, but in concern that the, there is decreased renal response to cortisimab if we use the high cutoff uh, hemodialysis in these patients. And we are still waiting for the results, final results. Okay, this is another, uh, another slide to say what, uh, what is the uh, pathology in multiple myeloma, I will pass by it very fast. Uh, in acute hematological malignancies like leukemia and lymphoma, the, uh, the injury uh, in this patient can be cancer, either cancer related or therapy related. Cancer related acute kidney injury due to tumor filtration of the kidney itself, which is more common with lymphomas or there is retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy causing obstructive neuropathy in this patient. Uh, hypercalcemia due to uh, pre uh, can cause pre-renal injury. Various paraneoplastic glomerular disorders. This paraneoplastic glomerular disorder can cause other many, many changes like that famous that happened with Hodgkin lymphoma, sometimes membranous, sometimes amyloidosis or immunotoxoid glomerulopathy. 
Uh, Lysis from Urea with acute tubular injury. This is famous with acute myeloid leukemia and chronic monocytic myelocytic, uh, mon monocytic myelocytic leukemia. Uh, acute tu uh, tubular interstitial nephritis is associated with hemophagocytic disease. Uh, sometimes DIC is seen in this cancer uh, in speech patients. Therapy related, uh, related acute kidney injury. Uh, including uh, TMA, uh, acute tubular injury, tubular interstitial nephritis, intertubular obstruction, and glomerular nephritis. The tumor lysis syndrome I will talk about later. Nausea and vomiting can cause prerenal azotemia. Sepsis should be associated also with prerenal azotemia. Nephrotoxicity with another drug because these patients have severe bone pains. Most of them are using non-steroid and anti-inflammatory. Some of them are using AC inhibitors or ARBs. This can cause uh, uh, an added effect of the acute kidney injury in these patients. Okay, this is a patient, uh, a CT of a patient shows enlargement of the kidneys bilateral due to lymphoma. And this is mostly reversible after starting the treatment, treatment of cancer of course. Okay, this is the uh, patients with renal cell carcinoma slime. Usually patients with uh, renal cell carcinoma have other baseline chronic kidney disease, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, proteinuria, older age, smoking, abnormal non-plastic tissue near the tumor. Uh, this, uh, to this patient, we have to do either total nephrectomy or partial nephrectomy. The total nephrectomy cause ischemic injury uh, and vascular injury. Also, the partial nephrectomy is better in treating this patient, but it's not that much better. Both uh, the uh, modalities of treatment can cause progression of the chronic kidney disease or new onset of chronic kidney disease, which will progress to end stage renal disease. Okay, there is far, uh, further modalities used in uh, treatment of renal cell carcinoma, like the percutaneous ablative techniques. They are using ablative techniques in the small because the uh, diagnosis now is much more better than uh, older days. They diagnose smaller tumors, they are trying ablation therapy for this tumor, but still waiting for the results of their uh, studies. Uh, okay, this is the slide for the hemopoietic stem cell transplantation. Uh, hemopoietic stem cell transplantation, we use it in many malignancies, leukemias, lymphomas, multiple myeloma. We usually do for this patient some, in some uh, point of their disease, bone marrow transplantation. We do ablation by radiation therapy and the infusion of the cells after killing the cancer cells. Uh, the causes of acute kidney injury in these patients are pre-renal causes like nausea and vomiting causes pre-renal azotemia, drug-induced nausea and vomiting, pre-renal causes and acute tubular injury from sepsis, sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, acute graft versus source disease and marrow infusion syndrome. Uh, okay, I want to talk about the sinusoidal obstruction syndrome. This is a syndrome of acute fulminant hepatitis leading uh, from uh, due to uh, obstruction of the biliary sinusoids, due to, to a swelling of the epithelial lining of the sinusoids. This is due to graft versus host disease, and this might cause very high bilirubin levels, and uh, will do fulminant hepatitis, and usually the patient within one or two days will develop hepatorenal syndrome. Okay, uh, the other causes are uh, thrombotic microangiopathy, TMA, uh, due to graft versus host disease, calcineurin inhibitors used in the bone marrow transplantation regimen, and total body irrigation also can induce the thrombotic microangiopathy. Acute tubular injury and crystalline nephropathy, like the amphotericin, vancomycin, amino glycosides, polymyxines, acyclovirin, gancyclovir, calcineurin inhibitors, non steroidal anti inflammatory, and other nephrotoxins. Okay, uh, this is uh, the frequency of uh, association hemopoietic stem cell transplantation, which is from 10 to 73 percent in cases we develop acute kidney injury during the course. Five percent only we need uh, progress to need uh, dialysis in, during the course. Uh, the, uh, the other cause in this patient 
mentioned that can be seen in the patient with bone marrow transplantation is due to activation of cytomegalovirus or BK virus or uh, the adenoviruses. This can cause acute glomerular nephritis or tubular interstitial uh, necrosis. Regarding the treatment of uh, TMA that happens to these patients, treatment is by stopping the calcium urine inhibitor and trying the antithrombotic D5-butide and doing the plasma exchange. Regarding the uh, obstruction of the sinusoid syndrome, treatment is by prostaglandin, pentoxifelin, antithrombotic D5-butide or sometimes fibrinolytic therapy, uh, mildly of benefit. This is a treatment treasure, the guidelines for treatment of hematorrhinal syndrome. Okay, uh, uh, the tumor lysis syndrome. Tumor lysis syndrome is very famous complication in patients with different patients with cancer. Usually a big mass of cancer uh, that can happen to the patient, especially if there is lymphoma, the biggest mass of uh, lymphoma. And, uh, uh, and even in solid tumors, starting and chemosensitive cancers, Starting the chemotherapy can lead to increase in the serum uric acid production, hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, and low calcium, leading to cardiac arrhythmias and even hyperkalemia. The uric acid precipitate in the renal tubules causes microobstruction, vasoconstriction, inflammatory cytokine activation, and glomerular injury. Calcium and phosphorus can precipitate together in the uh, kidney tubules and causes nephrocalcinosis. Usually we treat these patients with IV hydration and sometimes they see oxidase like allopurinol or uh, the fibroxate are good but the problem is that these patients sometimes this is a, a clinical mistake for some nephrologists that they use alkalinization of urine they are thinking that the uric acid is an acid that will dissolve in alkaline urine but the problem of this patient is alkalinization of urine causes the calcium and phosphate to be bound together and cause in this patient nephrocalcinosis. So we are treating the uric acid nephropathy, but we are uh, causing the patient to have nephrocalcinosis. So nowadays, don't alkalinize the urine in this tumor lysis syndrome patient. Just give them normal saline, IV hydration, so that the tumor, uh, the crystals will go out. Uh, rough case is a recombinant urate oxidase can be used before starting of the chemotherapy. Uh, this is a very good agent, new drugs that can help uh, this patient, but uh, there is a report to take care of that this, uh, this drug, this new uh, uh, benzene oxidase, uh, recombinant benzene oxidase, uh, can uh, lead to uh, production of hydrogen peroxide, which can cause uh, hemolytic anemia. Uh, in this patient, especially in patients suffering from G6PD deficiency. So we have to test for G6PD deficiency before starting chemotherapy if we are planning to do to use this uh, raspberry case. Okay, we have to try to decrease the phosphate by phosphate binders, different phosphate binders, and avoid alkalinization of urine. Uh, the other issue uh, in cancer patients with hypercalcemia. This is the, in 30% of the patients with cancer have hypercalcemia. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma due to paranoplastic syndrome and PTH secretion. Uh, hypercalcemia leads to acute kidney injury. Treatment of hypercalcemia uh, is with IV fluids. Please don't use loop diuretics in this patient because it causes uh, calcium to go down in urine and more and more obstruction. Uh, uh, treatment with IV fluids, no loop diuretics, panitronate can be used, but we have to do renal dose adjustment. Uh, Zolotronic acid is never used in this patient because zolotronic acid, as I will say in the next slide, has a direct tubular effect, uh, uh, cause acute tubular injury. So we don't use zolotronic acid, <laughs> panitronate can be used. Uh, the dialysis with low, serum, low, low calcium dialysate, newer options like Linozumab, which decreases nuclear factor Kappa Beta 
it into decreasing the osteoclastic activity is under trial. Okay, this is the hypercalcemia slide. This is the uh, uh, two slides left. The anti-cancer drugs uh, induce, uh, uh, induce acute kidney injury. There is conventional anti-cancer treatment. The conventional anti-cancer treatment uh, that are, are used, uh, 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 they are known to cause thrombotic uh, microangiopathy like that with mitomycin and gentamucin. This can cause direct uh, thrombotic microangiopathy. Uh, sometimes the platinum compounds cause acute kidney injury, hypomagnesemia, can cause this problem approximate tubulopathy. Uh, these are the patients with platinum uh, due to oxidative stress and damage mitochondria in the tubular cells. Uh, antifolate methotrexate, which is very commonly used in treating patients with cancer, can cause intratubular crystal precipitation. Treatment is like tumor lysis syndrome by IV fluids, hemodialysis. There is another drug that inactivates methotrexate, which is called glucarbidase. This new drug is under trials now to. Uh, to activate methotrexate in case of the patient having a kidney injury after methotrexate therapy. Uh, these are the conventional treatments. Uh, the targeted organ, as Dr. Stein said, the targeted organ, which is the very recent treatment for cancer, they uh, like the nivolumab, which is mentioned by Dr. Hussein, enhances tumor killing by enhancing the T cell killing of the tumor by binding to a protein, two proteins on the uh, surface of the uh, natural killer cells. These two proteins are found by this drug so that the natural killer cells are activated and kill directly the cancer cells. This, the problem of this uh, is that the, they cause uh, autoimmunity because they dysregulate the immune system of the patient and can cause this patient to have um, uh, and can cause this patient to have uh, something like um, uh, systemic lupus like uh, glomerulopathy. Okay, uh, this can cause proteinuria, acute kidney injury, lupus like glomerular nephritis, acute tubular interstitial nephritis, and can cause minimal change disease. Uh, the chimeric antigen receptor uh, cells, the CAR cells, these are host cells taken from the host. They are engineered in the lab to uh, have the ability to kill directly the cancer cells. These are used nowadays in some countries. Uh, this directly destroys the cancer cells in big, in big amount, and this leads to capillary leak syndrome and pre-renal anemia. Prior to treatment, we have to start with the steroid skin therapy and maybe if there is a severe capillary leak syndrome, we can use interleukin-6 receptor blocker to decrease the side effect of the treatment. Targeted agents like the drug that target gene mutation that stop the oncogenic signaling, like the ALK inhibitors and the BRAF inhibitors, uh, this can cause acute tubular injury and electrolyte disturbances. The BRAF inhibitors, which is the serine fibrinine kinase, uh, Vimor Afinib, this, this drug is dose related uh, acute tubular injury. This can cause vacuolation in the acute kidney, uh, in, the acute, uh, in the tubules of the kidney and the treatment of these conditions is by stopping the drug, the drug that injures the patient. And we have to weigh the, the problem, either to stop the drug and still save the life of the patient, or take the side effect of the drug and kill the cancer. Okay, pamitronate, which is sometimes caused, caused photocytopathy and minimal uh, change disease. Okay, there is older immune therapies like interleukin-2 and interferon. This can cause capillary leak syndrome and pre-renal azotemia. And sometimes the interleukin uh, interferon uh, may lead to uh, 
to uh, focal segmental coronary sclerosis and minimally change due to uh, filtration of the interferon to the uh, inside the glomerulus and the podocyte receptor uh, causes podocytopathy and treatment of uh, and to treat the interferon side effects for cancer we have to stop the treatment and start the steroids this is usually very effective in the minimally change cases and in the uh, tumorology but it's not very effective if the patient has focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Okay, the last slide, this is uh, a slide to show the side effects I told you. Upper there, this is the uh, uh, TMA that's caused by mitomycin uh, and uh, anti-angiogenic drugs. Uh, anti-angiogenic drugs, these are the antivascular endothelial growth factor. Uh, these drugs can be used to stop the progress of cancer and this usually uh, the side effect is TMA and these patients to treat the uh, TMA in this patient we have to stop the drug we can give the steroids but usually plasma phenesis is not good in these patients okay the other one uh, is acute tubular injury uh, acute tubular uh, tubular interstitial injury this is the cause of property caused by the mesotrexate and uh, the focal segmental glomerular sclerosis caused by panadronate interferon and anti uh, uh, anti anti uh, anti anti angiogenesis drugs which can cause also focal uh, segmental glomerular sclerosis and thank you very much the bone marrow inside the body so that if we infuse another bone marrow 
but this usually has the adverse effect of graft versus root